So I'm Huan Chen from Texas A&M University. Today I'm happy to share our work, MIU enabling large scale and dynamic link flooding defense on programmable switches. So first, what is a link flooding attack? A similar client is using network. The client and server may transmit data at a high speed. Unfortunately, some, um, some bot suddenly send high volume traffic and a link is congested. As a result, their transmission speed reduced repeatedly. We say a link flooding attack happens. Traditional link flooding defense based on, are based on cent centralized strategy. The centralized server can collect network state from the data plan. And um, the server can analyze the um, states and events, uh, find out their course and location, finally update policy to mitigate attacks. However, in real world network, we find there are many challenges. First, the network is bigger and bigger, so it's time consuming to find out the exact course and location within a, uh, a, a big network. Sometimes it can spend several hours. Besides the growing traffic uh, volume, making it more and more costly to collect the network state. Actually, the root cause is that defenders are usually far away from the crime sense. So they need to spend a lot of time and resource to collect net network state from the data plan. In this respect, the programmable ISP network, that is the internet service provider network, can be a better choice. The ISP network have many advantages. First, they are near to the um, attack traffic, so they have the potential to counter attack locally and timely. Second, the ISP network owns a lot of device so they can protect every possible target link with the help of the programmable switch, that is the P4 switch. In last year, we have witnessed the advantage of P4 switch. They are uh, high performance and programmable. For example, a P4 switch can support TBPS level throughput, so it's very suitable to handle some uh, high traffic volume scenario. Moreover, we can program the pipeline of a people switch to support customized operation, so we can deploy it customized and up-to-date function to meet different requirements. With this advantage, people switch also have some limitation. First, people switch only have limited memory. To maintain a line rate speed, people switch need to use some fast and expensive memory, such as SIM. So in this case, we cannot store too many stay on a P4 switch. Besides, if we let the P4 switch store a part of network stay, then the switch only have a partial view of the network. This makes it difficult to counter some complex attacks, such as the crossfire attack. The crossfire attack will concentrate a lot of packet from um, multiple ingress points on a certain link, so we need a complete view of the network. Third, current people switch do not support runtime reconfiguration. Whenever we need to update the function on a P4 switch, the switch needs to be interrupted, causing non-negligible downtime. So this slow adaptation problem can become a key bottleneck of the defense system if attacker change their attack vector quickly. In this paper, we propose MU, a memory efficient and adaptive link flooding defense system. To improve memory efficiency, we design a distributed storage mechanism. To broaden the network view of each switch, we design a series of cooperative defense API. Finally, we propose dynamic memory allocation to support runtime run updating on P4 switch. Now let's see some details of MU. The first goal of MU is to record more network state on the data plan. So the left side figure shows existing solution using um, four storage. As you can see, the switch on the routing path need to recall the state of all passing flow. Right? So this can introduce huge storage overhead. And we observe that only one switch on the routing path need to recall the state of a flow. So we propose that distribute storage and it's shown in the right side figure. So it can if we use distributed storage, we can save a lot of memory costs. The key question is how to decide the switch for recording flows. We design an in-network negotiation protocol. 
whenever there is a new network flow, the force switch will recall the new flow temporarily in a, a cache table, and then the packet will be forward without any delay. So the switch on the routing path can vote one of them to recall the new flow. After one RTT, the first switch can get the vote result that is the ID of the, of the vote switch. And then the first switch can move the cache uh, flow to the vote switch. After negotiation, um, the first switch would attach a switch ID to each passing packet. As a result, the vote switch can know which packet they need to recall. So in our system, we have a S switch. In this case, is the first switch, which directly connect to other network. So this, um, so S switch need to maintain a cache table, as I, as I mentioned before, and a mapping table to recall the switch ID for each flow. And all switch need to maintain a flow table to recall flow state. So um, with the help of S switch, um, the network state can be averagely stored on each switch. After distributed storage, we may need to synchronize some information in the network. So we can directly use global synchronization. That means we can synchronize all information among all switches. But this can be unscalable because there are so many network state and so many switch. To address this problem, we design a series multi-mode cooperation API. Network manager can easily adjust the synchronization granularity by calling this API. So here is a use case. Um, so in this case, attacker can dynamically change target link to avoid triggering detection. So to capture such a rolling pattern, um, network manager can use trigger API to define their synchronization condition. Uh, for example, whenever a link is congested, a congestion even will be synchronized uh, within a group. And then, the switches in the group can combine all network events and identify the routing pattern. Finally, network manager can also define some pattern to capture malicious flow. In this case, malicious flow would change their speed as the link is congested. You can find more use cases in our paper. The third uh, mechanism in our paper is dynamic memory allocation. So we notice some attacker may change attack vector to bypass defense system. This is because different attack have different pattern, and to capture different pattern, we need to deploy a different function and store different network state, right? So uh, this can introduce huge uh, storage overhead. To address this problem, we design a memory access proxy to isolate and share memory between multiple functions. And we can also reallocate uh, memory of each function um, as we need. You can find out more detail in our paper. We implement a prototype of MU. We also build a test bay for evaluation. The test bay contains five servers and five people switch uh, located in five cities. Um, so first, let's see the um, effectiveness of distributed storage. To prove the scalability of MU, we compare MU with our, our a for storage solution, a random storage solution, and an average storage solution. As shown in the figure, mu outperforms all other strategies in a linear type topology. So in this case, uh, the number, so the smaller the number, the, the better the performance. Okay, so you can see the similar result in other topology. So mu can improve memory efficiency by using uh, the distributed storage mechanism. We further evaluate the defend, defense effectiveness for single link flooding attack. We compare MIU with Radar, an SDN-based solution, and Ripple, a P4-based solution using four storage strategy. Um, as shown in the figure, MIU can protect the network and the network performance can recover quickly. And in contrast, um, Radar and Ripple fail to defend against the close fire attack. This is because they only capture few low-level flow, and this is not enough. So we further reduce the threshold of Ripple, and then from uh, 500 to 100, then you can see the Ripple can mitigate attack. But this can introduce some false positive, because if we set a small threshold, 
then some benign user may be misclassified as malicious user because benign user can also generate some low level, right? We also evaluate the uh, rolling attack. So uh, as shown in the figure, Mu can capture the rolling pattern and mitigate attack due to the complete view of the network. Um, and radar repo failed to defend against the rolling attack uh, due to the partial view. Finally, we evaluate the defense uh, effectiveness for dynamic link flooding attack. In this case, attacker can randomly choose one attack from three candidates in every period. So um, we set three periods, 60 second, 15 second, and five second. You can see Mu can mitigate different kind of attack within a few seconds, even if attacker change their attack very quickly, such as every five second. In contrast, repo would introduce a downtime, and the downtime is larger than 15 seconds in our environment. And this downtime can become more significant if attacker change their attack victim more quickly. Um, to conclude, we focus on large scale and dynamic link flooding defense based on programmable switch. We design a distributed storage mechanism to address the insufficient memory challenge. We design a series cooperative defense API to broaden the network view of the, of the switch. And finally, we support runtime updating by proposing dynamic memory allocation. We release our source code in GitHub. So um, thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions. Time for questions. So, um, in your threat model, so what are the, like, you uh, say that uh, there are some kind of uh, bots that can send malicious flows. So, are the bots part of the network or they can be outside of the network? They can be outside the network. Yeah, and they can send any packet, any legitimate packet or malicious packet. And um, so, uh, I mean, it's a great defense. Uh, but I'm just uh, wondering whether still there are chances the future paper, next paper, that how to bypass your defenses. What are the chances? That um, so this is a good question. So I guess they can try to um, in, uh, disturb the function of the edge switch. You know, in our paper, we have edge switch, and edge switch need to store more state to instruct other switch. Right, so in this case, maybe if uh, if attacker have some some botnet uh, and they can congest a single switch, then maybe they can they can congest uh, some edge switch, and then some link can be, I mean, they cannot be protect well, but you cannot congest the whole the whole network because we have many ingress point, right? So we have many edge switch. You can congest some of them, and there's some link maybe. Um, maybe, you know, cannot be protected. Yeah. So do you have any sort of a rough number that uh, how many edge switches the attacker has to find? Um, so yeah, yes. We, when we evaluate their, um, their defense uh, effectiveness, we generate um, hundreds of thousands flow, and this is, um, can be handled by our, our edge switch. So I guess they need to send tens of millions of flow to one single you know, switch to congest it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks again. Wan Cheng again. Wan Cheng.